Hey guys, in this video we'll cover how you back up your DigitalOcean servers and take snapshots and how you go about restoring them if there's a need for it. Uh, now this, this video is part of the lesson uh, that we're covering as, as part of Zoom Admin, uh, creating and hosting multiple uh, WordPress sites lesson. Um, and if you recall from our previous videos, uh, we basically create a digital ocean server connected it with Zoom Admin and then we deployed a bunch of applications to it. Um, now in this, and again, if you haven't watched those, if you're interested, go back and watch those. The links will be in the description. Now in this video, I want to show you now that you have your server configured, your apps deployed, you really want to make sure that your backups are enabled in DigitalOcean. Uh, now, cloud providers usually have this option. If you're not using DigitalOcean, if you're using AWS or Azure or something else, most of them have this ability built in. So you can always back up and restore as needed. Now, in DigitalOcean, it's pretty simple to do. If you have not enabled the backups when you're creating your droplets, your servers, you can come into the server and then go to the backups um, link here and then just hit enable. Um, and it doesn't doesn't cost too much. It's, it's pretty reasonable to enable this. Uh, it says $2 a month. So one thing I haven't shown you, like initially when we create the server, we selected the $5 one. Um, which is the cheapest option that they have. However, as we deployed more applications, we ran out of memory. And if we go back to our Zoom Admin machines here, you know, once you get to 85%, it will not, it will stop. You, you can, you can no longer create more applications. It will stop. It will give you an exception, telling you that you're getting close to the maximum memory limit. So you should increase your memory on the server if you're planning on deploying more applications to the server. Now, you can always get the second server. You don't have to necessarily inc increase the memory or CPU on one server. Uh, the nice thing with Zoom Admin, you can always connect more servers and deploy your applications to whichever server you want. And as you can see from homepage, it'll tell you which server the app, app is deployed to. Anyway, let's go back to our DigitalOcean account. Um, and again, what I was saying is the backup price depends on the size of the server. Like for a $5 one, I think they were only charging $1 a month. And this way, uh, because we increased the memory, now it's $10 a month for the server and then $2 additional for the backups. And again, this is a weekly backup schedule. Um, and the backups will start showing up here as they are created. Uh, and I think, I believe it keeps five or 10 of them. So, you know, it's, it's automatically back, backed up every uh, Thursday at 1 p.m. It tell, it's telling you what, uh, what time and what day the backup will run. Now, however, if um, you don't wanna rely on automatic backups only, you can always take snapshots. Where are snapshots? Snapshots are basically backups at, at a given point in time. For example, now that we know we have deployed and configured all of our applications, you know, and everything, everything is working, maybe it's a good time to take a snapshot backup to remind us that at that point in time, everything was configured and was working properly. So we can, we can go back into snapshots here and just name your snapshot with whatever you want and take live snapshot it only takes a couple minutes it's pretty quick um and they charge additional it's pretty reasonable as far as the, the pricing goes it they only charge for storage basically when you take snapshots now once you have your snapshots and backups uh, you can always you know under backups here you will have an option to restore uh, a given backup if you wanted to also, if you go to destroy uh, tab here, um, this is where all of your snapshots will show up. Once you take a snapshot, uh, for instance, let's take one sna snapshot. So we'll say server one, we'll just leave it the default name, take snapshot, and it'll, it should take a, 
I'll pause the video, it's pretty quick, but it should take like maybe less than a minute to get this done. Okay guys, so it took about 2-3 minutes to get this done, and it'll show you the size of the backup, it's close to 5 gigs. Um, and again, as you take more backups, you really wanna, you might wanna delete the older ones, because again, if you will, they, they'll charge you for each snapshot for the storage, right? Which is pretty cheap, but still, if you have a lot of them, you can always go back and delete the ones you're not using. Um, and again, so that's that's pretty easy to kind of back up the servers. Again, I always suggest to enable the, the automatic backups and then take snapshots after you know a major event. You know, whether you're installing more applications, uh, configure, configuring the server, what have you. Uh, it's a good idea to take a snapshot just because. It's a weekly backup, and if something something happens in between uh, those, you know, and you want to restore your server, you, can, you will you will lose uh, the newly configured stuff or deployed applications. Um, although it's still pretty easy to deploy more applications and configure them using the admin. Um, now this is how you back up the entire server, right? And everything that's on the server will be backed up, and when you restore, it'll restore to a given day and time um, so if something happens to your server uh, or even if you are getting a new server that's something I forgot to mention um, you can always if you want to duplicate this server for instance with the, with all the same apps you can always take a you know create a new server new droplet for instance and take instead of the default one uh, from the snapshots here you can choose your snapshot right this way, you're kind of creating a duplicate of your server uh, with all the applications on it. Now, I will not recommend this if if you are using Zoom Admin, just because Zoom Admin doesn't know you've done this when um, you know at least yet he doesn't know. Even eventually, might have that feature, but um, in, in Zoom Admin, because we're managing all the applications, uh, the ones you're creating on the server, deploying to the server. Um, so it's a good idea to kind of, you know, it's pretty easy to do again, like I said, but you can still, you know, duplicate your server and the data on the server and then go back and create the apps on Zoom Admin, that, that should work fine. Now that's, that's backing up the entire server, what, what if you want to back up the individual app? Uh, at this point, we, we, don't have that, we don't have that feature in Zoom Admin, but it's pretty easy to do using whichever um, SFTP client you're using like FileZilla or something else you can as I've shown you before um, you know this is the folder basically that Zoom Admin uh, keeps all the apps it's it's basic it's basically uh, Zoom Admin um, let me see I think I had a FileZilla open here so this is the path. I will also, it will also give you the path when you click on each of the apps. This shows the path to the application as well. So if you use FileZilla or something else, you can always go to that path and back up and copy it over to your um, machine. If you want to back up, uh, let's say your database files, even the database files are being, everything is being stored on, uh, in the same path, right? So if we go back, let's say MySQL here, you'll see now I have to put my password here again to connect. Um, let me find my MySQL password, or actually SSH password, not MySQL. This is, let's go ahead and reload this, that's fine. Okay, so as you can see, if you go into the data folder and we create the, the two worker sites, so all the MySQL files are here, including the, the config files. Um, if you go under config, MySQL config files are here. So this way, when you're backing up this folder, you're backing up all of your data. Also, the, the configuration of my, the, the MySQL server. Something goes with other applications you create, you know, app has your app files. Config might have your PHP INI file because it's a PHP application. There is no data, but you get the point. If it's a database application, you might have stuff in data. But otherwise, 
you should look at the up folder um, and we generally don't don't uh, map and, and redis this is a redis database uh, if something is off the shelf like php madney we usually don't map the up to um, the app inside container it's because with something like php admin you don't want to change the off the shelf files i mean you can you know but usually it's not the norm uh, so that's why we not we don't do automatic uh, mapping of uh, php admin files inside the app here however there is the config files if you're modifying config files uh, or even php ini that stuff you can back up easily now in the case of wordpress same thing here um, we are mapping the, the, the up folder with the container up folder so you see all the WordPress files here and, and you can always always change your theme or do whatever you want and um, the change will will be live on your website and also you can back up this the, you know the entire folder here right now in, in in the case of WordPress, I only recommend to back up um, the things you're changing, right? Because for the most part, WordPress is off the shelf. But generally, you want to back up your config file, or HT access file, maybe, um, and then plugins or themes folder. This way, everything else is kind of off off the shelf. You don't really need to copy uh, or just make changes to the you know built-in files of WordPress, uh, but your theme files, if you're changing your theme, that stuff you can back up. Um, and then when you want to restore or move it to another site, it's pretty easy to do. Um, that's it guys for this video. We uh, covered the entire lesson. This is the last video in the lesson. And if you have not watched the previous videos, go back and watch those and the, the links will be in the des description. So we, we covered the entire workflow of creating the server, connecting it with Zoom Admin, installing all the different applications, PHP, MySQL, um, PHP Admin, WordPress, and so on and so forth, configuring Redis inside WordPress. There's a lot of topics that we covered. And thanks for watching and see you next time.